Hey guys, what's up? Uh, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through lead count problem 1567, maximum length of subarray with, pro with positive product. So let's take a look at the problem. Given an array integers nums, it's asking us to find the maximum length of a subarray where the product of all of its elements is positive. A subarray is an array is a consecutive sequence of zero or more values taken out of that array return the maximum length of a subarray with positive product. All right, let's take a look at all of these examples. The first one is given this array, one minus two minus three and four. So the maximum length is four. Why? It's because the entire given array has a length of four and we can sum all of them up and the product is still positive, right? Because there are two negative numbers and they balanced out, which makes sense, easy to understand. Now let's take a look at the second example. 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So for this one, the longest subarray that we can get is the one that has two negative numbers, which is this. 1, minus 2, minus 3. We have to exclude 0, right? Also, because 0 multiplies with any other numbers is going to give us a 0, which is not a positive number, right? 0 is not positive, not negative. So we need to exclude zero. And also we cannot include all of these three negative numbers because three is an odd number, which is going to render us a negative product. So the longest subarray that we can get is this. That is why it's returning three. And this one, this one, the, lo the longest subarray that we can get is either minus one and minus two or minus two or minus three. Right, so it's either this one or this one, because if we can, if we combine all of these, it's going to give us zero. If we combine all of these, it's going to give us a negative number, right? So this is how this, this is going to work. And, and this one example just shows that the maximum length is going to be one because this is just this number itself, one single positive number because the positive number multiplies by, multiplies with negative number is going to give us a negative number, which is not meeting the condition. So how do we approach this problem? The solution that occurred to me during the contest the last night is that I can just use a for loop to go through from the very beginning of the first element to go through to go through this array. And I have a nested for loop. Another, so again, this solution is could be uh, very inefficient. As it turns out, I just uh, quickly went to discuss what I saw many other interesting problems, but I just want to discuss the original solution that occurred to me during the contest. So just bear with me and comment down below and let me know how you guys approach this problem. So continue to my solution. I just used a for loop to start from the very beginning of this for loop of this array. And then I have a nested for loop to continue to check. And along this way, whenever I encounter an element that is a zero, I'm just going to stop and break out of this nested for loop because I cannot just include a zero as part of this valid possible longest candidate subarray, right? Because zero is going to multiply with any number is going to give me zero, which is not a positive number. So as long as I meet a zero, I'm just going, going to break out. And before I meet any zeros, I'm going to keep track of the total number of elements or the, max, the possible maximum length of the subarray. And I'll keep incrementing the global max. After I go through this entire subarray, then I know what's the possible maximum length. And while I'm doing this, there is one important step, which is to do the pruning. Whenever the max is already greater than or equal to the remainder of this array that I need to traverse, I can just break out and return the current max. This is one important pruning step that I need to add in order for my solution to be accepted. Otherwise, I get time limit exceeded exception when the, when the given test case is too long. All right, that's just uh, my idea. Uh, hopefully, I have explained that very clearly. If not, let me just type in the code. Then you'll understand what my idea is. All right, now let me type the code. So first, we need a variable. We just call it max, which is the final result that we're going to return. And then we'll have one of one outer for loop smaller than nums length 
we might not go all the way there but we'll just put it here for now so this is the outer for loop inside the for loop so the first the first thing that we want to check is that we want to make sure if this number this number that we're currently trying to iterate on as the first as the left side starting point we want to make sure that it is not a zero if it is a zero we'll just skip this one it doesn't make any sense for us to include this zero as the starting element of a possible valid separate array candidate right so if that is not the case we can have a, a count a count of the negative numbers negatives so the negative number will just say if this one is greater than zero if that is the case then negative is zero otherwise it's one so we have excluded the possibility that nums i is zero so it's going to be either negative or positive so if it's positive then negative is going to be zero otherwise it's going to be one that's the starting point and then we want to update max here just in case max max so if this one is greater than zero that means we got one number so that is going to be one otherwise we'll put a zero here and then we'll have this in the for loop int j equals i plus one we'll start from the right the adjacent right number to the i and then j smaller than lambs length j plus plus next what do we want to do we want to count the number of negative numbers right so if let's see if nums j is is smaller than zero in this case we'll increment in negatives count in this case we'll just increment the count of negative numbers else if nums j equals zero in this case as i said previously we we'll just break out of this in the for loop that means we have reached a zero we are not going to be able to include a zero in this subarray to make it a possible longest subarray in that case we'll just a break we'll just a break otherwise it's a positive number we don't care so we don't do anything we just ignore that so after this what we want to do is that we want to check if the negatives is a is an even number that means the all of the negative numbers can be balanced out right negative times negative is going to give us a positive number so we want to check negatives divide by two equals to zero that means the number of negative numbers is an even number so we're good we want to check so in this case we want to update if it's possible to update the max math max max in this case the length the total length in between i and j that's going to give us the total number of elements so that is i minus j minus i plus one that is the total number of elements in this in this subarray all right after this the for loop should be concluded and then we can just return max so for here there's one more important pruning step that we can do is we can try to we can add if nums length minus i is smaller than or equal to max in this case there is no point to check further because the remainder the remaining elements combined is already smaller than the max that we have already achieved so there's no point to go through them right so in this case we'll just return max this is a very important pruning step for this solution otherwise it's going to be time limit exceed time limit exceeded for some extreme corner cases all right now let me hit run code accept it all right so now let me just hit submit and see all right accept it uh, 40 percent it's not super fast and not super amazing but at least uh, this is one solution that could get the code accepted just comment down below and let me know how you guys approach how you guys solved this problem of course there are more optimal solutions but i just want to throw my idea here and just uh, let people know this is one valid this is one valid possible solution so if you like this video please hit the like button that's going to help me out tremendously i really appreciate it and also don't forget to hit subscribe button as i have accumulated quite a few legal tutorials on talking about data structure or algorithms or talking about aws services so hopefully i'll just see you guys in just a few short seconds thanks very much for watching